Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel. Um, today we've got an 80 series Land Cruiser and we're getting ready to uh, install one of the Slinky suspension kits. Um, so I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and shoot a video on 80 series suspension since the Slinky kit uh, touches pretty much every uh, facet of it. Um, so what we're gonna do, I was gonna start with the bump stops and the sway bar drop brackets. Um, that way we've got more room to droop the axle to get the springs in and out. Uh, when I do an 80 series suspension, normally I undo the sway bar here to give me uh, more room to droop the axle to get the springs in. And the reason I do it at this bolt, this one's just a normal uh, through bolt. So if you break it due to rust, it doesn't really matter. You just get a new through bolt and stick it in there. Um, because we're doing sway bar drop brackets, we're actually going to undo it from this top stud here. Um, so I've had this stud, all the shock bolts, um, all the link bolts, everything's been soaking in free all for a couple of days. Um, and I went through earlier and cracked all these loose to make sure they were going to uh, cooperate. But yeah, we'll start with this guy and we'll take that one out real quick. And I'll get that the rest of the way out in just a second. And then we can go ahead and take these guys loose of the frame. And you can get through this hole in the frame rail. I don't know if you can see that. But if you shoot uh, down either way, you can get uh, penetrating oil down to the top of these bolts so that they're less likely to snap off. And there we go. Now we can move that out of the way. Go ahead and take this guy loose. And for the time being, I'm just gonna stack these back on here so that uh, they don't get lost in the order stays. And then we're gonna take our drop bracket and just stick it back on there. So there's our rear sway bar bracket set. I'm gonna leave this loose for now um, because it's gonna be helpful when we go to droop the axle. And then, yeah, I'm still in frame. We're gonna take this sway bar off, or the bump stop off. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go grab a little impact real quick so that's not as long. There we go. So we can set this bump stop aside. And the kit's got these new ones that are longer. So we'll just set those up in there. And they're slotted, so you can kind of move them around to center them. But yeah, so there's the sway bar drop bracket and the bump stop drop for the driver's side. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the passenger side off camera because you guys don't wanna watch me do that again. Um, and then I'll bring you back when we go to start taking the shocks off. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we're under the truck. And the next step is to remove the, uh, the original shocks. And to do that, there's two bolts that hold this shock mounting uh, flange on. Uh, you really want to soak these with penetrating oil before you try to take them out um, because if you break them off it's not fun at all to remove them. Uh, so we just use a really long extension with a 14 and get up there and these have been soaking for a couple of days so they'll come out pretty easily and I kind of bounce back and forth between the two and loosen them evenly because as you loosen them you're actually lowering the axle down and when they pop free the axle is going to jump as the shock falls down uh, so just be aware of that one bolt and there we go you saw the axle drop so we'll set those bolts to the side Then we can turn our attention down here to the bottom shock bolt, right here. Um, I already cracked these loose, and these are another one. You want to be easy on them. They're a blind hole, and they're easy to break the bolt off, and then you've got to drill it out and tap it. But uh, yeah, if you've pre-soaked them, they pop out pretty easy. And then you can just take a pry bar and kind of get it up behind the bushing and work the shock off. And just keep, uh, keep the shock separated left and right so you remember which one of these mounting plates is which. We're gonna set that aside for now um, so we can go ahead and put the spring in. So let me readjust you for that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take the stock springs out. Um, I went ahead and undid the e-brake uh, cable clamp from the frame um, just to give me a little bit more extra wiggle room. And you can just kind of pull them and wiggle them out sideways. And then just kind of snake them free. Uh, don't lose the rubber isolator that goes on top. And watch these, uh, the ABS wires. They're easy to snag. Um, easy to snag and tear and they're really expensive if you do. Uh, so I'm gonna go pop the other spring out. Actually I'm gonna bring the camera over there to do that. And we'll do them both on camera. because sometimes they like to come out differently. Yep, they're both gonna come out easy. Okay, um, so I've gone ahead and measured the new coils and marked them tall and short. So now I'm just gonna compare the two originals. And 
And on the originals, the driver's side is a hair, is a hair taller. So I'm just gonna match them uh, side for side. Uh, so tall side for the new spring with the tall uh, original coil. So we can grab our new uh, slinky coil. And the rubber isolator is still stuck up in there. So we can just start fishing this up. And sometimes they want to fight because they'll stick on the bump stop. So you got to kind of just feed the bump stop through. And then if you swivel it around, you'll see on the pigtail where there's like a little shorter opening. It's easier sometimes if you can pop that up and over. Like that. Whew. These are some hefty springs. Normally, I would grab Crash to give me a hand with this. There we go. But he's out test driving. Um, and then at the bottom, let me see if I can bring you around. So you can see. There's a pigtail here on the bottom of the spring. You can see where it swivels and it lines up. So you just want to line that up in the pocket down here. Um, so yeah, there's one side in. I'm gonna do the other side off camera so you guys don't see me uh, grunt and moan and be an old person. So I'll be right back when it's time to start putting the shocks back in. Okay, so I brought the shocks over to the bench to swap these uh, brackets out on them. And I just went ahead and labeled them passenger and driver so that I don't get confused. The easiest way to get these off usually is an impact, um, although the shocks that came off of it had a handy wrench flat underneath the bushing, um, so that'll make it easier. A lot of times the whole shock body wants to spin if you try to use a ratchet to take these off, um, and an impact will help, but we'll go ahead and buzz these loose. And I've never actually looked closely enough to see if these brackets are side specific. Uh, it's just easy enough to label them and know which way they go. And actually they must be side specific because this one's actually clean enough that you can see an R stamped into it. Um, which uh, it's the first time I've ever actually noticed one that was stamped. So then we can take our new shock and add the lower washer, one of the bushings. And you'll notice the bushings, they're rounded on one side and the other, they have like a, a recessed ring. The rings face each other. Um, that's what centers it in this hole. So we'll put them together, rings facing in put our washer on top and then just for a little bit of added security I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on that stud just so that in the future that doesn't get seized and break the shock if it needs to come out again and then you can just gun them down uh, the end of the shock is shouldered so that that washer will bottom out when they're at the right spot. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll finish up the other one and I'll bring you back to the truck when we go to install these. Okay, I got a little bit ahead of myself um, when I went to put the springs back in. I totally did not think about the fact that we're doing adjustable upper and lower control arms on this truck. Um, and as you can see, this control arm on both uppers 
is going to run right into the spring when we try to take it out. Um, so it's a lot easier to remove with the spring out. Um, so I've gone ahead and loosened actually all of the control arm bolts um, in prep for doing this. We're going to do the lowers on the ground just because the way my lift racks, um, it gets in the way of being able to do the lowers with them on the lift. Uh, but on the control arm bolts, they loosen from the nut and washer side, so the inboard side. There's uh, teeth on the bolt head side that dig in to the brackets. So you won't be able to loosen them from the bolt side. They'll only come loose from the washer side. Um, so let me knock those out real quick. And I already started tapping them just to see if they would go easy. So there's one. And I'm just using a small brass drift to knock them out. Uh, I also undid the proportioning valve uh, lever at the axle end and I undid the brackets that retain the ABS lines uh, just to make sure that I don't accidentally hit anything either with the control arms or drooping the axle. I don't want to tear those lines. Uh, and I've got a, a jack under the uh, diff housing holding it up. cable is right in the way of hammering on this one. So there's all our bolts freed up. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this one out with the pry bar down low because if you've got it held up, and usually you can get this to slide past. Yeah. If you take the lower end of this arm out, you can wiggle so that the bolt will clear the, uh, the proportioning valve back here. Uh, it'll just barely squeak in and out without having to move this out of the way. I'm going to pop these out one at a time, uh, just so the axle doesn't roll on me, even though the bolts are all out. Uh, we're going to adjust this once it's back on the ground. So for right now, I'm just going to match the length up to the old control arms, and then we'll fine tune it once the weight of the vehicle and everything is on the springs. And the easiest way to set those um, is just put the factory bolt through both control arms uh, and wind them out till they're the same length. And that just makes, it'll make it easier to, to set them back in the truck and then we can adjust them later. Uh, some of the arms on the market are not double adjustable, so you've got to loosen one end uh, in order to make the adjustments. Um, but these are not that tight, so it's easy to adjust them on the vehicle. Take some finagling. To get this ever bolt. You know what? I'm actually just gonna spin this bolt. 
around. And not even fight with that control arm bracket. Or that radius, or uh, working valve bracket. So let's go ahead and stick that one through. And then on the bottom side, these are going to want to fight to go back in because the pan hard's pulling, pulling us sideways at an angle. So we may not actually be able to get the bolt in for this one. Start. There we go. And uh, once we lower this back down onto the ground, it'll shift everything so that this bolt will actually line up. Right now, everything's getting pulled crooked, um, but that's in good enough for now. So I'm gonna turn this off, go do the other arm, and then I'll bring you back to put the spring. Okay, um, so I've got the springs back in now. And as you can see, we flipped this upper control arm bolt uh, so that it comes in from the inside so we can take it in and out without it hitting the spring. Uh, like right now, we're lucky. It actually lines up with the gap in the coil spring wrap most of the time that's not going to be the case and it's going to end up hitting the spring uh, so we've gone ahead and flipped that one backwards uh, we don't want to tighten up the bolts yet these are vulcanized bushings so they don't spin so you want the weight of the truck sitting on it before you tighten these up um, otherwise like if we tightened them right now when we went to lower the truck we'd rip the bushings um, out of the inside of their sleeves uh, which you know you don't want that to happen um, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and put the shocks back in. Uh, it's hard for you to actually see what I'm doing there. Um, so I'm just going to do that off camera. But I'm going to anti-seize uh, the two bolts that go up into the top of the frame uh, just to give us a little bit of extra insurance against them seizing and breaking in the future. And then the axle stud um, down where the lower bushing goes on, I'm going to clean that up and put some... Uh, some rubber safe grease uh, like disc brake caliper grease on that lower stud again just to keep the bushing from seizing up on there uh, and to keep it from squeaking um, once the shocks are in and i'll go ahead and bolt our sway bar brackets back up here uh, then we'll lower this down and i'll do the lower control arms on the ground and i'll come back and take you through doing that in just a little bit okay so i lied about uh telling you I was going to put the shocks back in and you didn't need to see any of it. Uh, they are back in, but I should probably tell you a couple of tips. When you go to put these upper plates back in, because of the angle the shock sits at, uh, at rest, these plates aren't going to line up with the frame. Let me turn this light off. Um, they're not going to line up with the frame right. So you're going to end up, the inboard bolt will start um, and then get a few threads on that one. And then you'll have to kind of jockey the shock around to get the, uh, the outboard one started. And you'll probably only get a couple threads started on that one. And then you'll just have to work them up alternating until you get that plate lined up. Um, and then same thing with the lower mounting boss where that uh, axle stud comes through the bushing they're not going to be at the right angle. So you're going to have to jack the axle up and down until you can get the bushing to kind of start on the axle stud and then use a mallet to drive it on. Um, and then on the lowers, I also put anti-seize on the lower shock bolts just because they like to stick in there and break off. Anyway, I uh, wanted to go back and uh, say that portion before I forgot because that will make uh, putting the shocks in easier and I decided to leave the sway bars loose from their brackets until we get everything back on the ground. Uh, right now with the pan hard bar pushing everything sideways, they don't want to line up right, um, so it'll just be easier to do them on the floor. So uh, 
I'm going to go do the front suspension while it's up in the air, and that'll be a separate video. And then I'll come back and do the rear control arms once I've got everything on the ground, and then we'll go through adjusting everything and do the uh, pan hard bar as well. So anyway, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so we're back under the truck. Um, I went ahead and did the front suspension uh, and got all that buttoned up so that we can put the truck back on the ground and do the pan hard rod and the uh, lower control arms. So first thing, we're gonna go ahead and do the pan hard rod. Um, and I thought I had loosened this. Oh, and I just put my face in a spider web. There we go. And I did not loosen this. Um, so let's ask Crash if he would be kind enough to get us a 24 on the really long ratchet. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other end while we wait on that. Well, actually I'm not because I didn't loosen that end either. <laughs> yes, 24. I thought I loosened these while it was still up in the air. There we go. So there's the lower end, the axle end loosened. There we go, there's the frame side loosened. That one doesn't want to come all the way out, neither of these do, so let's ask Crash if he will get us a brass hammer real quick. Oh, tool boy Crash. <laughs> Thank you. Neither of these wants to cooperate and come out. Okay, let me go grab a drift real quick. Now I'm going to climb out of here and get the spider webs off my face. There we go. Hey, Crash. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, there is the old pan hard rod coming out and the reason we needed to be able to put the truck back on its own springs and wait before we do the pan hard rods is we're doing um, adjustable pan hards so now that we know the the, uh, the height of the lift we can do a little bit of trigonometry and figure up the length for the uh, the new pan hard rod. We can pre-adjust it before we put it in here. Um, and then go from there. So you guys can't see me because I couldn't get both of these in the frame at once. But I'm putting the axle end in first. And I'm doing that because the axle side is a uh, blind threaded nut. 
So we want to make sure we get that in and that it's not cross-threaded uh, when we go to crank it down. And now we're going to get Crash to help us and we're going to see if he can push the truck to the passenger side so we can line this back up. And if we can't do it with Crash pushing, we'll just have to get the uh, ratchet strap out and do it. Oh, that's almost... Can you go a little bit more? You almost had it. <laughs> oh, that's almost there. Go a little bit more. There we go. I can crank it the rest of the way in. Thank you. Okay. So there are pan hard rods in. And, uh, We'll go ahead and get that a through, couple of threads through. Just to be good. And I'll come back uh, with a uh, plumb bob to the outside of the tires to make sure that we actually have the axle centered. Um, I already checked the front axle when I did it and I was spot on, so I have a pretty good amount of faith in my math for doing the rear axle. Uh, so there's, there's the adjustable pan hard rod in, and I'll move you around to the side here real quick, and we'll put the lower control arms in and the sway bar brackets back on. I also did the pan hard rod before I did the lower control arms, because with the, uh, the original pan hard bar in, it was, pulling, it was pulling the axle off center which means it's pulling the, uh, the bolt alignment off center on the lower control arms. Uh, so it's a lot easier to swap them out once you've got the centering corrected. So let me go slide you around sideways and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the, the pan hard rod in, we've got the uppers on. Last real big thing we need to do is these lower control arms. And these I actually did already <laughs> loosen when it was in the air. Um, and these, we're using solid lowers, they're not adjustable, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just take the top and bottom bolts out. Um, top and bottom bolts come out, and then you just knock the, knock the bolts through, and we'll take the arms out. Did my punch go? I know I kicked it under here. There it is. Whew, and we almost hit the camera with the bolt. So there's factory lower arm out. And then the new arm from the slinky kit. If I could get that to go in the hole. There we go. Uh, let's see, what do I need here? We're a little bit out of alignment. I'm trying to decide which way I need to roll things. Well, I, yes, Crash. I know which way the bolt needs to go. Uh, do you want to see? Try pushing the truck forwards. Actually, let me grab my bolt first. Okay, truck forwards. No, that's up. <laughs> yes. Well, I, that's fine. I don't want it to roll. I just want you to push. <laughs> uh, try going backwards. Well, I don't think that's actually going to help. Hold on. Let me try something else.
Yeah, it wants to do the same thing down there. I thought maybe it would go in easier if I flipped it. It did not. Huh? Oh, there we go. Almost. <laughs> I, what? Can you grab me a pry bar? No, it wouldn't go in the pocket before. A uh, little one. Like my old Matco one. Thank you. You know what, actually, I'm going to leave that one like that because I'm wondering if these arms aren't two different lengths. So I'm going to pop this side loose real quick and uh, I'll either squish myself with a truck or this will go in easier. There we go, that's going much easier. Can I have a second pry bar, please? Um, actually, you know what? My bigger one will work now. Not, not Big Bertha. Yeah, that one. Big Thelma. Thank you. And I've got a small punch in the other side of this bolt hole so that it's holding so that this pry bar does fly out. I've got a second one kind of backing me up. If I could find the first one. There it is. And I assure you, we are professionals. <laughs> we don't normally struggle this much. But you see, I started a diet. Okay, so you guys get the gist of that. Um, I'm gonna go to the hospital for a heart attack. And when I get back, Crash will do the other side because I'm, uh, 
I'm fat and lazy. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay, so the, <laughs> the struggle was real getting the uh, lower control arms in. Uh, normally they go in much easier than that. I think it's because I was actually uh, trying to film it this time. Uh, you know, the, the internet wants to make me look bad. Anyway, lower control arms are in. Well, Crash is going in to finish them. Uh, everything's getting torqued up to final spec. Uh, we've, we've bolted the sway bar brackets back. Um, so the rear end's all good. Uh, and again, before you torque all the control arm bolts, make sure the truck is sitting at ride height. Um, if you do them with the truck in the air, it'll rip the, uh, the bushings as it rolls back down to ride height. Um, but yeah, that is the end of part one of our 80 series suspension install. Uh, I hope you found it useful, um, struggling aside. Uh, if you did, please subscribe below and we'll see you next time. Thanks.